Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 7.2, where we're going to look at trends, size, ionization energy, electronegativity, wish we had a pencil thin mustache, electron affinity, reactivity, acidic character, and ionic radius. So, we've got a lot of stuff to do, so let's hop right into it. Size, the distance between two nuclei, it's an indirect measurement or measurement. Um, so what happens is you've got a nucleus here, you've got a nucleus here, and electron clouds are all kinds of crazy looking things. And then you've got another one. Ooh, can I change the color? Probably not. And it's hard to tell where one begins and one ends. So you take half the distance between them and say, there you go, you've got a winner. Thank you. Um, now if I want to look at size, the trend of size, the biggest element is francium. A little francium down here. The reason my francium is the biggest is because as you go down the periodic table, you add energy levels. Okay, so that means you've got a little whoop uh, and a little whoop whoop and a little whoop 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 and all that fun stuff. Um, remember, those are layers; those are energy levels. They are not rings. Don't say rings. As you go from left to right, and this is not, as you go from left to right, it gets smaller. The reason why they get smaller is because there are more protons are more attractive, which pull in more and make it smaller. Okay. So the added attraction, um, there's added attraction, so you reduce the size. Potassium or gallium? Potassium's right here. I just get rid of these guys. Potassium's right here. Gallium's right here. Okay. Potassium would be bigger because on that row it has fewer protons. Fewer Protons, less love. Aluminum or thulium. Aluminum or thulium. Thulium is bigger. Why? More energy levels. Remember, the less attraction thing. The more attractive you are to someone, the closer you'd sit to them. So if here's your couch. What a great couch. There you go. Here's your couch. And if you were sitting right here, um, and someone you don't like is on the couch, they'll sit over here. If it is somebody that you do like, then maybe that person would sit a little closer. There you go. Oxygen or chlorine? Um, oxygen's here, chlorine's here. Ooh. So this one's a little leftier, which means it should be bigger, but this one's a little downier, which means it should be bigger. So, left ear and down ear. So, which one's bigger? Well, energy levels have more impact. So, as you go down, remember I did a little whoop, bloop, bloop, bloop. That's a big change. Left to right, the change is minor. Um, up and down, the change is much more significant. Ionization energy is energy to pluck an electron from its valence shell. By the way, it's of a gaseous atom. And you do need that. And it's important to know that. But you need to know that. Okay. So if you're removing an electron, you are breaking the bond of the nucleus. Hey, that's positive. And the electron. Hey, that's negative. So if you're breaking a bond between a positive and a negative, that's going to cost you some energy. The biggest ionization energy is fluorine. King of ionization energy. I'll draw my little arrows to support that. Doot, doot. Little arrow to support it. Doot, doot. Notice we know, ignore noble gases a lot. Um, so... Bigger means less attraction. So we're talking about size, right? A bigger size means less attraction. So ionization energy goes down. If it's not very, if its electrons are not very attracted to the nucleus, it's easy to remove them. If you don't like your current girlfriend, it's very easy for you to break up with her and get another one. Okay. More protons means more attraction. So if you're more, if you're very attracted to your girlfriend, it's tougher for some other girl to come try and steal you away from your little honey. Okay. So V or CO. B, C, O. Um, cobalt has a bigger ionization energy because it has more protons and more attraction for electrons. So it takes more energy to remove it. Aluminum or silicon? Aluminum, silicon, silicon. Same thing. More protons, more attraction, takes more energy to remove it. Lithium. Cesium. Lithium, in this case, it's not, we're not talking about protons. Lithium is smaller. 
so more attractive. So harder to remove a veil select. Exception ionization energy trend. Group three. Reminder out to you faithful readers. That's a two. And here's three. Um, there's an exception. So you keep getting smaller, right? So it should take more energy to remove it. But remember with our orbitals, if I have S, right, S1, check, S2, check. Here's my P orbitals, and it doesn't matter whether you're going to S or 2P or whatever it is. This one up here, this guy is higher energy. Remember, if you're higher energy, you are less stable. So it is easier to remove you. Stables, there you go, less stable. Easier to remove. And that's what ionization energy is, is removing a valence electron. Group six, the second electron in orbital, so the higher, so second electron in orbital, so it's higher energy, so it takes less energy to remove. So let me show you this one. Maybe I'll even change my pen to be all kinds of crazy. So group six is the oxygen group. So there's one, two, three, four. Oh, I put it in the wrong spot. One, two, three, four, five. This is the sixth one. That's the sixth one. Why is that one easy to remove? Well, it's the second electron you put in an orbital. Remember, electrons don't like each other. Hey, I hate you. You're not so great either. So because they actually repel each other because they're both negative, they are a higher energy state, period. So it takes less energy to remove them. Okay. And here's the orbital thing. I guess I just kind of drop it back in there. You get the idea. Predict the column. So... First ionization energy is 450. I'm going to call that a small number. This one, to be the same, would be about a difference of 500. The difference here is about 3,000. Right? The difference here is about 700. The difference here is about 900. The difference here is about 800. Okay. So notice this jump is huge. So if that second ionization energy is huge, that means that it just left the noble gas state. It takes the most energy to remove from the noble gas state. So if this first one was relatively small, that means this must have been group one. Group one had a small first one, and that would have it land in the noble gas. So let me just hop back to a periodic table. So notice here, if I'm in group one, the first time I lost an electron, I would end up as a noble gas. Hey, I'm all right with that. That shouldn't cost too much electrons, too much energy. When I leave my noble gas state, this should be a huge amount of energy. So all you have to do is wherever the huge one is, that's where you left the noble gas state. So group one, first one got me to a noble gas state, leaving it as the second one. Which group is A in? Change here is about 6,700, whatever. Yeah, 6,700. Change here is about, let me write that so it's legible. So 6,700. Change here is about 4,000. And then it doesn't have any more. So second is the biggest jump there, right? So that would be group one, the alkali metals. The reason why this doesn't have any more is this is probably lithium, right? So the first one would make it helium. So the first one would make it to helium. Leaving helium would be huge, which would be like hydrogen. And remember, it doesn't make it like that because of the electron configuration of it. Change here is about 700. Change here is about eh, 6,300, 6,300. Change here is about 3,000. Change here is about 3,000. Change here is about 4,000. My big change is right here. So that means this third one is the one that left the noble gas state. Okay. So the first one we said is alkali. Let me just answer my questions. What would most likely be the charge on element B? So let me hop back to a periodic table, hopefully forward to one. So the third one was the big one. So that means if I was right here, the first one would be small. Second one, which you get me here, would be small. And the third one would be huge. Okay. 
So that means I this one would be an alkaline earth metal. So if this is an alkaline earth metal, alkaline earth metals are plus two. Why does element A only have values for the first three ionization energies? Um, it's lithium. Only has three electrons. And notice these values were higher. Electronegativity is the ability to attract bonded electrons. Okay. Um, fluorine is the best. Francium is the worst. Why? Fluorine. Small. Many protons. Quartz row. So attracts electrons. Well, francium. Big and unattractive. Big and unattractive has a hard time catching electrons. Okay. And why is it unattractive? It's unattractive because few protons in its row. For its row. And it's also unattractive because it's big and the protons are very far away. Electron affinity is the ability to attract free electrons. Notice this is pretty much the same thing. Fluorine is the best, francium is the worst. Why? See last slide. Often a negative energy value, okay? So you're trying to attract free electrons. Now a negative energy value means that you are forming a bond. So if you're forming a bond, so if this is like fluorine plus an electron, it becomes F negative, right? This means I'm forming a bond. Forming bonds releases energy. So energy is released when bonds form. And if you look at ionization energy where you're removing one, that's why those values are positive. Reactivity. Metals are more stable losing electrons. So francium is the most reactive. Remember I said France is a big loser? Francium is a big loser. Um, it's the most reactive because it's the best loser. The reason why it's the best loser, it is the biggest and least attractive. And why is it the least attractive? Because it's big and it has the fewest protons for its role. Row, pardon me. So, see how big francium, and that makes it bigger, and it also means it doesn't have many protons to attract electrons. So it wants to lose electrons. It can lose it very easily. Nonmetals are more stable gaining electrons. So fluorine's the best. Why is fluorine the best? Because it is small and attractive because it has many protons for its row. Acidic character in water. Bases make OHs, sort of, and we're going to say that's okay. Okay, So bases make OH. So this plus H2O makes NaOH. Okay, It does. Calcium plus H2O makes Ca plus 2 plus OH negative. Okay. So remember, if you've got HOH, that will set it up. Think of it that way. And then you get uh, hydrogen gas, too. I guess I left out my hydrogen, didn't I? Aluminum plus water, you could see how you could get Al plus 3 plus OH negative plus hydrogen. But AlOH taken three times plus H2O aluminum has an empty orbital like this right here. Okay? So HOH, I hope you know, can be H positive and OH negative. Hey look, here's an empty orbital. I'd like to form a bond with you. And I could get Al OH taken four times plus H positive. What's the opposite of making OHs? Making Hs. That says, hello, I'm an acid. <laughs> and that's what happens when that goes through. So as you go from left to right on the periodic table, metals get less acidic. I'm sorry, metals get less basic. They get less basic. 
meaning they don't create hydroxides as well as they used to. Negative ions get bigger and positive ions get smaller. If I am sulfur and I have six valence electrons in my outer shell, if I add some more electrons, if I put an electron here, an electron here, these electrons actually push away all of the other ones, right? So this one would push this one away, push this one away, push this away. So if you push this, you now have a new size, which is bigger. So negative ions get bigger because there's extra repulsion. And positive ions get smaller. So pretend I'm calcium and I have eight on this one and then two on this one. Calcium forms a plus two ion. So plus two ion loses two electrons. See, S is minus two, gains two. So if I lose these two electrons, doink, doink, what happens now is I have zero in the shell. So this shell's not even here. So look what happens. <gasps> look at how much smaller I got. Oh my goodness, I went from being this big to, oh, look at it, it's all gone, it's up. No, so. Rank from smallest to largest. N minus 3, O minus 2, F minus 1, neon, which whatever it is, and sodium over here. So what happens here, Na plus 1. So what happens here is all of these things have 10 electrons, right? Nitrogen has 7 protons, 8 protons, 9 protons, 10 protons, and 11 protons. And what happens is all of them, because of their charges, right? Seven protons of your negative three, you're going to have ten electrons, ten electrons, ten electrons, ten electrons, ten electrons. So if they all have ten electrons, what the way you rank it is which one's going to be the most attractive. So the most attractive one pulls you in closer. Okay. So this is the most attractive one because it has the most protons. So Na positive is smaller than neon, is smaller than F negative 1, is smaller than O negative 2, is smaller than N negative 3. So the first thing you look at is what energy level you're on. The next thing you look at is how many protons. Review. All trends are size and attraction. Vertical trends also have to do with shielding because if you have, um, say, element X, Um, and electrons out here are being shielded from the attraction of the nucleus. Instead of causing this X, I'll call it positive. It's being blocked. This is blocking the attraction of the nucleus, and that's shielding. Aluminum and oxygen families have exceptions in ionization energy, and it's all over. Woohoo! And I will see you tomorrow. Doodles.